ESPN's coverage of the divisional playoffs is brought to you by Circuit City. Answers in every department, low prices all over the store. And by Embassy Suites, a design for living. Doesn't take long to take this roof off because of the heat. They had it on earlier this afternoon during batting practice, but in about four or five minutes, the roof is off, and six foot ten Randy Johnson's on the mound. But you know what? Bobby Valentine does not care. After 1,704 games managing the Texas Rangers and the New York Mets, Valentine is finally in in the postseason and a major, major monkey off his back, and he and his team quite loose. Our Pepsi lineup tonight in game one of this best of five National League Division Series. The ageless wonder Ricky Henderson is in left field. Edgardo Alfonso, one of the heroes yesterday with a two-run homer in the first and three RBIs hitting second. John Olerud hitting third. Mike Pepperoni Piazza hitting fourth. Career postseason, 0-6 as a member of the Los Angeles Dodgers. He, too, trying to get off the schneid. Against the lefty, Benny Agbayani, the pride of Hawaii, will start in right. Robin Ventura dropping the sixth. Sean Dunstan against the lefty gets the start in center. Ray Ordonez, that errorless streak intact at short hitting eight. Masato Yoshi, who has pitched very well since mid-July for the Mets. Hitting ninth against six foot ten left-hander. Everything but his record was incredible this year. Randy Johnson, but more on that in a moment. His record could have been something like 24 and 5, right? Oh, he was unbelievable. Second half, 8 and 2 with a 1.89. He had a couple of starts in there that in the middle of the year that he was 0 oh, oh and 4. And what and you, Leo, and I talked about it. He had a no-hitter, a one-hitter, a two-hitter, and a three-hitter. But he had a tremendous year. He is a great fastball. Won 17 ball games and 35 starts, 364 strikeouts, and just 271 innings pitch. The defense for Arizona Diamondbacks a good one. Williams and Bell, Gold Glove contenders at third. Stinnett catching tonight with the injury of Damon Miller with that broken thumb, a fracture, hairline fracture of the thumb. Only caught Randy Johnson six times this year. Damian Miller catching 29 starts. Yeah, but you know what he knows? You don't, you don't have to catch him more than six times to realize put an extra padded glove inside the, the catch. <laughs> 364 strikeouts this year for Randy Johnson, the fourth best all time. And speaking of all time, Ricky Henderson with two leadoff home runs this year has 75 for his career. Blowing away everyone else as the flashbulbs go off for the first pitch in postseason history here at Bank One Ballpark. Ricky this year <laughs> had the star crossed last couple of weeks. Had a wonderful season and had a base running gap in Atlanta. It looked like he didn't run out of double play ball in that final game of the three game sweep at the hands of the Phillies. But last night hit the home run, took his time. He loves the postseason, right? Very emotional player, Ricky Henderson. A lot of people haven't liked the way, have, has not liked the way he played over the course of his career. Sometimes call him a hot dog. I personally love the way he's played. Always a gamer, always a guy, as Bob Valentine talked about, that loves the spotlight. Putting together a great year, 37 steals this year in 51 attempts. A little bit down with his percentage, but 11 years with over 100 runs scored. 15 this year with 12 home runs. The one thing he will do is what he's doing right now is work that pitcher, make him throw a lot of pitches to set up the rest of this offense. This whole Met offense does that. One thing Ricky will do is work the pitcher. And that not only Ray helps him out get a view, not that he doesn't know what Randy Johnson does, but it gives everybody else on the bench a chance of seven, eight pitches in the first attack. And you can underscore that. They have faced each other often with Johnson having the upper hand those days of Oakland versus Seattle. And here we go. We foul it off. We do it again. 97 mile an hour fastball. Talking to Mike Piazza before the ball game. Piazza's approach, as you see him there in the dugout, to facing Randy Johnson is the approach that I think all hitters should take. You have to look fastball away. You cannot look for the fastball in because he's going to throw that slider. He's going to eat you up with check swings and swing at bad high fastballs. Here you see he's going to throw the fastball here. Hit to center field. Coming on is Finley. And he makes the catch. Uh, Steve Finley. 
whether it's going straight back to the wall or coming in towards second base, you know that he's going to go at about 110 miles an hour. Yeah, and I think he gets the best jump of any center fielder in baseball. I know that he doesn't have the great lateral range anymore because he's lost speed, but he gets great jumps. He sees the bat short on the, the ball short on the bat barrel, meaning the guy is jammed, and he just gets a great jump, full tilt, and you'll see that throughout the game. If you focus on him, when the ball comes off the batter's bat, he's moving, always. He doesn't have to look. Tremendous center fielder. It's just fun to watch him play. I mean, he certainly isn't fluid like a Willie Mays or a Junior Griffey. Andrew Jones, but hey! who plays it harder and better than Steve Finley? And Edgardo Alfonso looks at strike one from Randy Johnson. Alfonso, after Henderson single, hit a homer in the first inning at Synergy Field yesterday to give the Mets a 2 nothing lead and really deflate the Reds right away. He had three RBIs. And remember, it wasn't so long ago that he went six for six in a game for the Mets in the Astrodome in which he hit three home runs. What a season he's had moving from third base to second base. And he belts this pretty well to left center field. Back it goes. Back, 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 back. And it's gone. It hit off the facade above the yellow line. We had to wait. But Alfonso, as he did yesterday, with a home run in the top of the first inning, has done it again. 0-2 pitch, and Johnson came in, Ray. Well, Bobby Benilla, I think this ball's out over the plate. Looks like it was a fastball, but I still think it's out over the plate. Bobby Benilla, before the game, said this guy has got as many big hits as anybody. Look at the pitch here. Fastball right down the middle, 0-2. I don't care how hard you throw, you can't stay in the middle of the plate. These guys are geared up. You see this ball right there as Finley's tracking it right beneath that right off of the flag there. The red, white, and blue banter. You know, if that had been about, about eight feet to the right, it would have been in play for a double. According to our clock, a 99-mile-an-hour pitch, which meant it went out at about, what, buck 25? Yeah, that's one thing, too, talking to Piazza and mentioned it before in the open, his fastball is very light. It, it's it got some serious giddy-up. There's John Olerud right up the middle off Randy Johnson for a sharp base hit. But it's a true four-seamer. It's a fastball that rotates over the big seams, and it doesn't seem heavy when you hit it on the barrel of your bat. If he's out away from you and you're geared to fastballs away, you can do something with Randy Johnson if you're right-handed. Left-handers, by the way, that's John Olerud's first lifetime hit against Randy Johnson, only having faced him five times his entire career. Once setting out opening day, not facing Randy Johnson. So the Mets brought their hitting shoes on the flight from Cincinnati to Phoenix here late last night in the wee hours of the morning. Johnson again ahead of Piazza. He's been ahead. Well, I think this is the best fastball hitting team in the National League, the, the New York Mets. A lot of people talk about the Braves because of Chipper Jones, Brett Boone, and those guys, but I think this club... Diving but not coming up with it is Hanley Frias and Piazza with a hit. So the Mets with three straight hits, and we heard Buck Martinez at the beginning of the game. They, and they were loose. Let's make no mistake about it. It's not like, hey, we don't care, but it was as if... We've stared disaster in the face, so what's Randy Johnson? And they're coming to the plate hacking, right? Yeah, they are, and that's what you have to do against a guy like Randy Johnson. It's not like facing a guy with a changeup or a nice split finger. You know that when you come into the game with Randy Johnson, you're gearing up to hit his fastball. That's your only thought. And talk to Robin Ventura before the game and three or four of the other Mets, that's what you do. You go up there thinking fastball, and if he throws it out there, you whack at it. If he throws it to a good spot, you're out anyway. This one is down in the dirt and blocked by Kelly Stinnett. First pitch to Benny Agbayani is a ball. Agbayani, a great success story from AAA and was an immediate say, matinee idol in New York. Benny and the Mets being heard all over Shea Stadium. And a binge of home runs in the month of May. Pulled off a little bit in the home run department because nobody this side of Mark McGuire and Sammy Sosa could keep up that pace. Ended up with just the 14 homers. Island of Oahu. And Misato Yoshi saying, you know what? You know, if you want to give me some more. 
Well, one run's not going to be enough. I guarantee you, this Arizona ball club scored 898 runs this year, which ranked first in the National League. So they can put some numbers on the board in a hurry. Although they didn't do it too often in Randy Pitcher. So Walter looking to get those guys to the plate. We've seen breaking balls from Johnson and Agbayani, and this time they were more familiar with a strikeout. Two outs, two still on. Well, that's a slider he threw at 90 miles an hour. Randy Johnson on the home run by Edgardo Alfonso, 99 miles an hour. Now, this is a slider. He drops down. His ball just moves a little bit down, not a lot of bite. I've not seen a good slider, but you'll see the rotation there, and that ball generally has more of a downward break to it. That's very flat, but still 90 miles an hour on his breaking ball. A little Rob pumped up, I think. Yep, Robin Ventura. Left-hand side of the plate hitting sixth against the lefty Johnson. Looks at ball one. Robin knew him certainly in his White Sox days. Off the battling Mariners. Frank says Brian Gorman behind the plate. Remember in the playoffs, six umpires working. Brian Gorman is the plate. Wally Bell at first. Mark Hirschbeck at second. Dana DeMuth the third. Randy Marsh the left field line. Paul Schreiber is the right field line. That's a shot. Off in front of the Mets dugout. This guy is so dominant as we look at the umpires that you just talked about. That's some of the best ones here, Randy in left field. Chris, I thought that this was a misprint when I read this earlier in the week. 103 left-handers hit against Randy Johnson this year. 135 Ks. Inside. 987. Just nine hits and 87 at-bats were left-handers against Randy Johnson. In his career, 187 lifetime with 294 Ks. More strikeouts and hits allowed. 155 hits and 831 at bats. But Oliver went right up as a lefty and got a base hit. Ventura trying to do the same. On a fastball out away from him. Another thing that the hitters talked about is this guy throws 96 to 98, but it seems like it's 106 because he's so big and tall, you don't pick up the ball until it's very late. And left-handers, it's almost impossible because he's actually releasing, releasing the ball from almost behind him. He drops down so low on that first base side. Stinnett gives it a heck of an effort. But it bounces into the seats. This ball has natural tail, meaning it runs in on left-handed hitters. Great effort by Stinnett on this play here. Almost getting there on a ball that probably we never got higher than maybe 15, Not very 18 high. feet. All over the runner at second base, Piazza is at first. Mets have one, they'd like another. Or more. But they're not gonna get it. Johnson ends the inning with a pair of strikeouts. But before that, Edgardo Alfonso said, fastball, I got you, fastball. So the Mets have grabbed a 1-0 lead as we head to the bottom of the first at the Bob. Home run by Edgardo Alfonso off Randy Johnson has given the Mets first run of the game. Now it's the Diamondbacks' turn to show what they can do. Manager Buck Showalter managed against Randy Johnson and the Mariners when he was with the Yankees in 95 in the postseason. That was a 3-2 loss in that series. He would like to even his score at 1-1 one one in this round. And here is the Pepsi lineup for the NL West winning Diamondbacks. Tony Womack, the stolen base leader in the majors, is in right field. Jay Bell is at second base. A great power year for him. Luis Gonzalez, a 30-game hitting streak along the line this year, is in left field. Matt Williams, MVP candidate with 142 RBIs. That's a career high to go along with 35 home runs. A great story, Rubio Durazo from Mexico is at first base. Steve Finley is in center. Hanley Frias, the short Kelly Stinnett is the catcher, Randy Johnson. Hitting ninth against Masato Yoshi. 
12 and 8 on the year, but a big second half, Ray. He had a great second half, the best pitcher according to Bobby Valentine. Yoshi winning the 12 games, 168 hits and 174 innings pitched, 25 home runs. His best pitches at sport fork ball that he learned from Hideo Nomo, his fellow countryman, pitched 11 years in the Japanese professional league. Bobby Valentine saw him over there, brought him back to America with him. Now he's pitching in the first game of the playoff series. positions in fielding percentage all three of them having a shot for the golden glove and after talking to all three of those guys they said John Olerud was the best they've seen at picking low throws and you look, look at the Mets defense right. yeah 20 that's... unearned runs allowed the next best in the majors 50 yeah that's, that's I mean that's and that's right that's the reason for it, why they are where they are today how about this the infielders for the Mets okay as we look at Jay Bell who season he had coming an all-star with the Diamondbacks 38 home runs the best home run production we've ever seen from the second baseman just to finish the thought on the Mets infield 27 errors made by the Mets four infield Chuck Knobloch of the Yankees himself is 26 yeah I'm not doing that to Kevin get on Young. Chuck it's just to put it yeah Kevin Young I mean Kevin Young put it in perspective, right? the first baseman right, right. that's and a lot of shortstops make 25, 30 errors in a season. I mean, you, that used to be commonplace because they'd have, you know, 700 chances out there. Jay Bell this year became the seventh second baseman to hit 30 or more home runs. Rogers Hornsby, Joe Gordon, Ryan Sandberg, Davey Johnson, Jeff Kent, Bobby Gritch, and now Jay Bell. The most for a second baseman is 42, Hornsby and Davey Johnson. So 38, he was close to setting a record. And he's a totally different hitter than he was when he was with the Pirates early in his career. Then he hit second in the lineup, but basically he was moving runners along. They had him choke up, hit the ball to right field, inside out. The ball, he's always been a great fastball hitter. You see most of his home runs come on fastball down and in. It's this ball pretty well to center field. Sean Dunstan is there and makes the catch. There's two outs. Yoshi is going to keep you off balance. When he was taken out of the rotation in the middle of the season by Bob, Bobby Valentine, it's because he lost his split finger. He was throwing nothing but fastballs, moving it in and out, up and down, and just couldn't get by with that. Although he throws a slider, he's almost a two-pitch pitcher. And is one of the guys that is split finger as you see there, third lowest in the major league since August 13. That's why Bobby Valentine chooses him to be his number one starter here in these playoffs. That'll bring up the left fielder and an all-star himself, Luis Gonzalez. Four all-stars this year for the Western winning Diamondbacks. And who knew that in a trade in December of last year with the Tigers, it sent Kareem Garcia to Detroit and Luis Gonzalez here. They would end up with a guy that hit 336 with 111 RBIs and led the league with 206 hits. I mean, they figured it was a good trade for him, but maybe not this good. 30 game hitting streak rate, 16 game, 13 game. Five times this year. Ended the season with a 12 game hitting streak, Chris. Five times this year, hitting streaks of 10 games or more. You mentioned the 30 gamer, only one player, Vladimir Guerrero, had 31 mm -hmm. hits. Consecutive games. Yoshi working him away. Well, he does not throw inside that often. Just inside for effect. Not too many fastball strikes on the inside part. Fastball away. Got a 
he should have one. He's going to max out at 88, sometimes 89 on the gun. But what I was about to say before, most pitchers use their fastball to set up their changeup, their slider, by locating the fastball, making hitters aware of the fastball in, to quicken them up in there. Yoshi is just the opposite. He works with his split. This one is to the gap in right center field. Don't step! Bates! No, he doesn't. He traps it. And Gonzalez is in the second base. He hits so hard, the ball just snow cone out. He almost made a spectacular catch. He covered a lot of ground. Sean Dunson, the career shortstop. The Mets have marveled at how he's adjusted to playing center field, just as Arizona has marveled with the way Womack and Bell have. But look at this running here. I mean, he covers about 50 feet there, makes a great catch, and then, as you said, Chris, fully extended snow cone to ground, knocks the ball out of his glove there. What a tremendous effort by Sean Dunstan. And again, until this year, never played outfield, except in mop-up games what a, a great jump and unbelievable distance he covered big outfield here 413 in the gaps as you saw where Eduardo hit that ball 407 to center field huge outfield second only to Colorado's in room out there to so bring up Matt Williams MVP candidate with 35 homers 142 RBIs and 303 on the year Talk about a consummate professional. I think you're looking at one right here. May be on his way to winning his fifth gold glove in his career as well. Well, Matty, he is so special. You're talking about building ball clubs around people. I don't know that I've ever met a more unselfish player than Matty Williams. I saw when you interviewed him tonight how he talked about his situation with his ball club and the MVP situation. He was almost embarrassed to talk about it. My Tim said that every time he looked up, he saw him run on second base. Well, guess hit. what? Yeah, guess what? He's looking up, <laughs> and Gonzalez is at second base with two outs. He's just as effective as you look here at Mass Cam. The ball's a good six, seven inches outside as the catcher. Yachts and jerks it back. Umpires hate that. The hitters hate that. We thank Mike for running that to me. That'll yeah. give uh, viewers a great look to him. That one fooled Matty. He pops it up. Off speed pitch all over the calls for it. Makes the catch and Gonzalez will be stranded at second base. We played one in the desert. One nothing mess. Top of the second, nighttime in Phoenix. Inside swing at the first pitch is Sean Dunstan. It's it directly to Tony Womack in right field. One pitch, one out for the Mets here in the second. That really surprises me there. Sean only two walks this season and 255 plate appearances. <laughs> well, if he swings at the first pitch, it's hard to walk. Hey. He's always been a hack. Hey, you know, he's 36. He covered a lot of ground. He's no spring chicken out there I, in center you know, field on that play. I'm, not, I'm saying I was really impressed with the range he showed up. They may have made a mistake, although he's a solid big league shortstop. You just think that's his, that was his 14th start of the year in center field. Never had to play that position before. It's not like he had a bad career short. No, he had a great career shortstop. Uh, he had a great career, great throwing arm, but, but what I saw right there at 36 years old, I don't know too many outfielders that would get to that ball. But he's always been a great runner, very quick, good base dealer. Kind of two and one to Ray Ordonez. Just a superb glove man. National League, count is three and one. Yoshi, the pitcher on deck. In there for a strike, and Ardonius thought that was low and inside. So the count is now full. Well, watch Stennett set up right there inside. And Randy again, he's throwing from the first base side. That ball has the tendency to move in to those right-handed hitters when he drops down like that. It's almost like a cutter. So all it has to do is just get a little bit of that play. 
Ordonez. How about this? Not only the best defensive shortstop in the National League, drove in 60 runs. Drove in 60 runs. From the eight hole. From the eight hole. Hit 258. And everything you get offensively from him is a, is a huge plus. Breaking ball in there for a strike. Striker number three for Randy Johnson. Two down. Well, more baseball here on ESPN tomorrow. The same two games. The Astros winning in Atlanta 6-1. to one. We'll have game two for you with John Miller, Joe Morgan at 4 Eastern time. Then the Red Sox and Indians on Fox at 8 Eastern. Pedro Martinez against Bartolo Colon. Then Ray and I will be right back here with Buck Martinez for game two of the Mets and the Diamondbacks. Well, this is a dangerous situation here with Randy throwing 98 and Yoshi hitting 164. He throws a fastball and he lobbed a hair lip somebody over there in that first base <laughs> dugout. <laughs> Bobby, he wasn't too impressed with that swing. <laughs> well, I got a, got a piece of it. Made contact. You know she must, uh, Bobby must realize he's up there like this against Randy Johnson feeling like he's got a two. That's a nasty pitch on the outside corner. So a pair of strikeouts in each of the first two innings for Randy Johnson. The Mets lead it one nothing to the bottom of the second. Chris Berman, Ray Knight, Buck Martinez with you here at Bank One Ballpark in Phoenix, Arizona. Downtown, here two of the Diamondbacks, a roaring success. As we face the bottom of the second inning, the Mets on a home run by Edgardo Alfonso off Randy Johnson in the top of the first. They did one to nothing. The Diamondbacks, year one to year two, admittedly a different cast of characters in many cases. But their 35 game improvement with 100 wins this year versus 65 last year. A half a game better than the 19 ought to ought three New York Giants with Christy Mathewson and company. The next for the Red Sox of 45 46 and Jerry Colangelo. Well he said we're, we're not going to assemble this team for one year and then let him go. A la, I mean he didn't mention it but a la what Florida did. This is kind of a four year plan. He understands that a lot of the guys, the Matt Williams, the Jay Bells, the Steve Finleys, they're not spring chickens, the Randy Johnsons, Ray, but I mean, it, I mean, this team, it's not like they're going to be one year wonders. Well, if you look at the way this team was assembled, they went out in the expansion draft and picked up some pretty decent players, traded, as you see, Matt Williams there, Travis Fryman for Matty Williams who was chosen in that expansion draft, mm -hmm. traded for Tony Walmack in February, signed Jay Bell as a free agent, oh. signed Alan Bennis, Stottlemyre as free agents, dished out a lot of money, $72 million or somewhere thereabout. But I don't think this is a ball club or an ownership that is going to dish out that money, win, and then, you know, decimate oh, the God, club. No. They're, they're in it for the long haul. Speaking of long haul, a Rubio Durazo. Actually, that ball looked like it was going to go farther. It fooled Dunstan for a minute because he has hit some moonshots in this building. And one of the best stories of the year, a Rubio Durazo hit 400 in double A at El Paso, 400 in triple A in Tucson. They said, you know what? Travis Lee's hurting and playing some poor first, at not hitting the stick. Well, let's get him up here. This young man from Mexico, 11 homers and hit 329 in 52 games. So. 400, 400, and then 300 in the majors. Yikes. One out here is Steve Finley. Last year, member of the National League champion San Diego Padres. This year, hoping to duplicate it here with the Diamondbacks. When you talk about assembling a ball club, the personalities of that ball club are so essential. The mess, the cohesiveness, the blend. In the hole the diving Alfonso the Diamondbacks have a man on with one out here in the second guys like Steve Finley a gamer a ball player that's what scouts and general managers talk about maybe not the most talented player in the league but certainly a guy that does not make a lot of mistakes as you see fastball away there Yoshi watch the movement of this pitch away 
on the outside part of the plate. Finley, right on top of the plate, dives in with his left shoulder. That's why that outside corner pretty much become The Diamondbacks you know, some like this man, Hanley Frias, you don't. Yoshi and a ball nicely gloved by Ordonez to save. Ah, Could have gone into center field, although Alfonso was there backing up. Shot to Yoshi, and they get the lead man, so Finley's a race. Frias a fielder's choice, two outs. Great play here. That's the split finger. That's great play both ways. That ball was hit hard. He knocks the ball down, comes up. What your Ordonez here. Tremendous hands. Goes down. Look at that head right on the ball. As Finley taking no prisoners trying to knock him out in left field. What do you expect? Uh, that's exactly what I expect. But Ordonez with that glove. Uh, you just don't know how good these guys are unless you watch them every day. Hey! I mean, that's a tough pick. Going toward first base. And the ball thrown behind him. Runner bearing down on him. You have to find the bag, pick up the ball, and you somehow make the catch. It looks easy, but it's not. No, but Kelly Stinnett, the catcher. Pitch is 0-1. Fouls it back on the inside, 0-2 Stinnett. Remember the Mets from 94 and 95? Played with the Brewers, 96 and 97. Was hurt the fourth game this year in a collision at the plate. Ryan Klesko came barreling in for the Braves. So he played hurt for much of the season. Ooh, just misses on the outside, one and two. Well, that's a good pitch there. I mean, he did not have to jerk that ball back. Just missing on the outside part of the plate. You'll see, as I mentioned earlier, Yoshi staying away with the fastball. Piazza talked about when his split finger or fourth ball is effective. And here it is, this little finger to the outside part of the plate, thumb, this is the split finger. Meanwhile, those wondering about the Yankee game, the Yankees lead Texas 8-0 in the top of the ninth. Bernie Williams right with six RBIs. Two-run double in the fifth, three-run homer in the sixth, RBI single in the eighth. The Yankees will not give up their crown very easily, that's for sure. No, so they, they get a big game out of El Duque, which raised some eyebrows when Joe picked him and not Roger Clemens to start. Roger will not go to game three in Texas. That's in New York. The other New York team is here in Arizona. Stinnett's staying alive. The count remains at one and two. Well, I called the pitch prior to that a splitter, but it actually was a fastball. That's another fastball. Yoshi coming right at Stinnett, knowing that Randy Johnson's on deck. Stinnett, thinking of Rennie Stinnett. Rennie Stinnett, what do you have, about eight hits that one game? Oh, boy. There goes the base runner, and it's popped by Stinnett. So, Frias will circle the bases, but Ordonez will make the play. So, we've played a pair here at Bank One Ballpark. The Mets lead it 1 nothing. And ESPN's coverage of the divisional playoffs is brought to you by Gateway. Call 1-800-GATEWAY and connect with us. And by Wendy's Bacon Mushroom Melt. When you gotta have one, you gotta have one. Beautiful sight here and obviously a packed house in downtown Phoenix for game one of the Mets and Diamondbacks. Chris Brown and Ray Buck Martinez with you. Home run of the first inning by Edgardo Alfonso, just as he homered last night in Cincinnati in the wild card playoff win for the Mets over the Reds. He'll bat second behind Ricky here in the third. Ricky Henderson, lifetime Ray, only seven for 46, 152 against Randy Johnson, although he has worked him for 22 walks. However, last three games against Johnson in 98 and 99, now that's really over here trade leagues been on base seven times in 13 plate appearances two hits and five walks so maybe after all these years he's getting the hang of it how about that game? let's see that one again five stolen bases that was uh, Oakland against Seattle 
That's a long time ago, though. That was Ricky at his finest, wasn't it? Yeah. Not his base stealing finest. That was the early 80s, but that was oh, ALCS MVP Ricky that year. Well, you can run him, Randy. He led the National League or was last in the National League or first in the National League, whichever you prefer it. Anyway, they stole more bases on him than any other pitcher in the National League, 42. Now there's a base on balls. So he gets on, you know what he can do. So welcome those of you that may have watched the Yankees put the finishing touches on their 8 nothing win over Texas. So the Rangers still scratching their heads. And why do we always have to play the Yankees? Here's the final line score. Al Duque with two hit ball through eight. Bernie Williams with six RBIs. Bobby Valentine does not bunt very often. His ball club was 13th in the league and sacrificed bunts. So they, you know, they believe in the big inning. He does start runners and, and hit and run a lot with Alfonso. Alfonso hits the ball exceptionally well to right field. The only thing with him, he's pretty much a fly ball hitter. Doesn't hit a lot of ground balls. His natural stroke is line drive fly ball. That home run that he hit was on a 99 mile an hour fastball. That ball right there, 98 mile an hour. He's just one of those guys that has a very short, compact swing, evidenced by his 27 home runs this year. This is a little guy. I mean, he's only 5'11, about 170. You no, know, played third last year, natural second baseman, but we talked about the year that Jay Bell had. This guy is going to get some consideration along with. Venturi and Riazza. They both moved this year. Alfonso from third to second, Bell from short to second. Right. So these guys had stupendous years in their first year at second base. There goes Ricky, pitches fouled off. We'll do it again. And Buck Walter at length with us today in our meeting with him talked about how important the move of Jay Bell accepting that move to second base and Tony Womack accepting the move to the outfield was in making this club as successful as it has been, and that just points to the unselfishness. And that's the word that was used you know, four or five times today by members of this ball club, Buck Showalter, Jay Bell, Williams. How this ball club is truly professional mm -hmm. and unselfish. 0-2 pitcher on the way, foul back, we'll do it again. You know, there's Mets only had one hitter in their lineup to strike out over 100 times. This season, that's truly phenomenal. That was Robin Ventura, who was punched out in the first inning. But he had, he had 109 strikeouts. But John Olerud hitting third only punched out 66 times with almost 650 plate appearances, 125 walks. Alfonso punched out 85 times. Well, these guys make contact. You know Piazza doesn't strike out very much. This ball club reminds me a lot of the Yankees of last year with so many professional hitters leading the all of Major League Baseball and on base percentage. Taking you deep in the count. Very tough to strike out. Even 0-2. I mean, here we are at 0-2 pitch. And Alfonso's seen five pitches. It's a bat. Almost. Almost. And Randy Johnson does not have no. a very good move. You just have... Right here, Ricky stepping off in between steps there, his feet off the ground, and that's one thing that left-handers can do. If you watch a, a base runner, you left-handers at home, watch when he starts moving his feet and then make you move over there because both of his feet are in the air. He has no way to get back. Look at Ricky. He's almost like, come on, throw it over here again. Oh, he'll play with you now. I mean, you're talking about a true professional base runner, hitter. I mean, he does everything. You and I were talking before the game with all the stats and the places that he is getting in the all-time list. Oh, he's unbelievable. I mean, he's for stolen bases. He's in a league of his own. He's, he's gone league. and left everybody with it. But I mean, stolen bases, just, just to put it in perspective, Ricky, this year, well, he ends up for his career. Ricky, this year, he had 37 stolen bases to bring him to 1,334. Lou Brock is next with 938. The lead off home runs we showed you. He's third in walks behind only Babe Ruth and Ted Williams. He's fifth in runs behind Cobb, Aaron Ruth, and Rose. I mean, 
his 2,800 hits. He couldn't hit 300 homers for his career, right? He's at, he's at 278. Leadoff hitter hitting 300 home runs. Scoring all those runs. I mean, this is a consummate leadoff hitter. You can talk about, I mean, I, I never saw Ty Cobb, obviously. But you sure? I, I, yeah, well, well, I may you're have. Played. Kind of a Georgia guy. I thought you would have seen him. Yeah, well, uh, saw him in the movie. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, and, and here's the here's the news for everybody else. Ricky said this year he wants to play about five more years. Now he'll be 41 on body. Christmas Day. Look at by that body. He has a 41 year old body. He walked quite on the back going by Alfonso against Johnson. This time some high cheese and Alfonso will sit. Strike number five for Johnson. One out here in the third. What a battle there. You're talking about playoff battle. That's just. When two concentration levels just go sky high, and the reason you didn't get that ball is because it's above the belt. You can't catch up to that fastball. The great location there, going up the ladder with the fastball on the balls down, easy to drop the bat barrel to it. But he finally just cl climbed the ladder and just very hard to get the bat barrel to the ball up there. That'll bring up John Olerud Ray, singled in the first inning. Later moved to second base, was stranded. And Rams going to keep an eye on Rick. I like that that kind of that sidearm. That was almost Sonny Jurgensen like. That 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 one throw that had Ricky leaning the other way. But what he's doing, he's just giving Ricky a better idea. I mean, Ricky has seen him throughout his career. 13 steals, most of anybody in the league, are actually in the career off of Randy. The more he throws over there, the better chance he has to read him. There you see, as I talked about before, 42 steals, 71%. But the most attempts in the league at 59 and the most stolen bases. So that tells you a couple of things. One, he doesn't have a good move. Two, when you get on, you try to create runs with him because he doesn't give up too many. Here he goes. No contest. No contest. I knew it wasn't going to be a contest. Once he read Randy and he was reading him well. And, and I mean, he played against him as last 10 years watch how he gets a great jump there and that's one thing about Ricky he usually has that foot or that leg moving almost in a walking type lead gets a great jump and not no chance no. for Kelly Snet. the only guy with a release fast enough would be either Marino or Namath and I still don't think they would have got I'd like to see Pudge not uh, Pudge <laughs> but Marino <laughs> yeah so the Mets with a runner in scoring position with one out, and Olerud that counted his favor. In there for a strike, two and one. But here again, the pitches that he has thrown this inning, Randy Johnson is not a normal guy. He generally throws 130, 35 pitches an outing. He's not on a pitch count. But this Met team works you until they get a good ball to hit. In there for a strike, so Johnson comes back to two and two. Chris Berman, Ray Knight, Buck Martinez with you here in Phoenix for game one between the Mets and the Diamondbacks. If you're just joining us, Edgardo Alfonso, home run in the first inning solo off Randy Johnson. And Olerud sends one deep to right, back, 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 gone! 3-0 Max. We showed you that Johnson batters from the left-hand side hitting against him were barely over 100. We showed you earlier that no lefty had hit a homer off him since Jim Edmonds did it two years ago. Olerud single, and now Olerud a home run. This Ray was a no-doubter. Breaking ball, John Olerud actually out in front just a little bit. Bobby Valentine looking at the elevation of that ball, and that'll tell you what happened to it. For the Mets. So I think we told you Buck Martinez was with them before the game. We saw them, Ray. They came in loose and hacking. 
And look at this shot by Piazza. They're still hacking. Finley to the wall, makes the grab about 400 feet away. So intimidation factor, not tonight. See here as Finley again getting the great jump, turning straight around. Look at the route he takes to this ball. Very good angle to the ball, and you see him not giving ground any way left or right. A lot of outfielders will actually circle that ball, start off toward right center or left center. He saw the ball off the bat and ran to the spot that he thought it was, looked up, and there it was. So long ball is quieted this crowd. This is a great hit ball, but second in the league in average. In as far as I'm concerned, first, because the Colorado Rockies led the league in average as they always do. That inflated, rarefied air out there in Colorado. Mm -hmm. Cumulative thus far tonight. New York 11, opponents nothing. But they were first in on base percentage, second base on ball, second in average, fourth in run scored. This is a very solid offensive ball club. And Bobby Valentine choosing to take Daryl Hamilton out of the lineup and Roger Cedeno to actually Cedeno switch hitter the two left-handed bats did not take Ola Root out and we talked about earlier only five at bats Cito Gaston when he was managing Toronto and managing John Ola Root out of respect for Ola Root and the problems he'd had with the aneurysm when he was a younger man would not match him up against Randy Johnson. In opening day in 1983, Cito set him out against Randy Johnson in Seattle just so he wouldn't have to face him. What I've seen so far, I call him mistake. <laughs> Cito Dover recovered that year. They won the World Series. Yes, they did. So, wasn't that big of a mistake? No. Didn't hurt them all year. We can make that decision. But the Mets, you know, they... Yes. The Mets have just come in happy. We could just feel it. It's well, what even Bobby was saying. It, like the way my club looks tonight, we can feel it. Well, there's another strikeout. So, Johnson has struck out six, but... He has given up two home runs, including this two-run shot from John Olerud. And as we head to the bottom of the third here in Arizona, 3 nothing Mets. Hey! Randy Johnson at the plate with his Diamondbacks trailing 3 nothing to the Mets here in the bottom of the third inning. Ball jumping, Ray, and, and you made a point that, that Randy spent a lot of time looking at Ricky Henderson and, and maybe we'll watch him kind of trot this one out as... Jay Bell makes the play, but maybe it affected his concentration. I don't think very many people can get in Randy Johnson's head, but Ricky Henderson is definitely one of those guys, and he's done it throughout his career. Talking about gamesmanship and, and knowing how to play the game. Ricky over there just playing cat and mouse with him, making Randy uncharacteristically making throws to first base over and over and over again. And eventually, you, you lose concentration. You know, you only have supreme concentration, and I've always felt you can't think uh, but one thing at a time. You start worrying about the runner and the hitter. You end up giving up a lot of home run balls. And Randy generally does not throw over that often. I mean, the thing about Ricky Henderson is just like Mark McGuire. If he gets a pitch that he can handle, he's going to hit it hard. And he's going to hit it long. Ricky Henderson, he's going to steal bases on you. Tony Womack, as Henderson was way in at left field, and he's not going to catch this one. Womack can fly. He's going to try for three. Here's the relay. <laughs> Said no relay. He was hitting three all the way, and Ricky was so far in against Womack, he had no prayer, Ray. Well, I tell you, you talked about the ball carrying in this ballpark, and the Mets have played here before, but the ball is jumping in this ballpark tonight. Piazza doesn't hit that ball well. This guy does not have very much power. He hits the ball 375 feet to left field. Flying all the way. Big addition to this ball club, and you see right there because of those legs. Play shortstop against left-handed starters. But again, you've talked about Henderson being in. But the ball is flying out of here. This is my first visit to this ballpark, and I don't know if this is the hot air or what. But I'm telling you, I can see why 
the Arizona Diamondbacks led the National League in home runs because Piazza off balance hits the ball 407 feet. The ball that Alfonso hit was 420 feet. Jay Bell to center field. Dunstan will give it his best, but Womack will score, and the Diamondbacks are on the board. setting the stage as leadoff hitters do. Watch him here tagging, running hard all the way. Dunstan on a very shallow fly ball. You know he's not a center fielder, but here coming in, no play, great hustle. Getting right back in the ball game. Not that they were out of it, three no. runs down. Luis Gonzalez, who doubled to right in the first inning. That open stands to start against Masato Yoshi. Works him inside. Yoshi's not going to punch out a lot of people, Chris. And Last so year, right? you know, right. So what? Only 117 strikeouts and 171 innings pitched. This year, the same ratio. However, Ray, yeah, 105 and 174 this year. But on papers here, Randy Johnson against Masato Yoshi. Starting August 18th, 5-0, and and in those eight starts, five times went seven innings plus, had a nine strikeout game and an eight strikeout game. So he has been a different pitcher for the last six, seven weeks. He has. That's about the time that he met with his buddy and fellow countryman, Hideo Nomo, and up in Milwaukee, went out to dinner with him. There's what's the greatest thing. When, when Nomo and Yoshi go out to dinner, who's going to, and he says, oh, we just talked about pitching. Who's going to contest that? In Milwaukee? Yeah. Okay, two guys talking <laughs> Japanese? <laughs> Who's going to say, why? Well, you, you, no, you weren't. You were talking about. This is just foul. Boy, Gonzalez has been on it tonight. Well, I think that night they would definitely talk about pitching because Bobby had taken Yoshi out of the rotation. And not even, even, I'm, I'm sorry. No, just look right here. We'll, we'll just look at there about not even close. One thing about this ballpark, you noticed when Finley came in on that ball in center field, and when Dunstan dove on the ball in right field, it turf came up with him there. That was almost like a divot on a green. You can see right where the ball hit. So just wait long enough and you'll be able to call it right. <laughs> <laughs> and as for dealing, I would say, is the only guy that would understand a conversation between Yoshi and Nomo in Milwaukee is um, probably Bob Yuki. Yeah, you would probably understand what they were talking about. Oh, yeah, or at least he'd tell you what he yeah, read. I'll tell you what he We'll do it again on three and two. But anyway, to finish that thought, Bobby Valentine said that Yoshi really struggled with his split finger. Uh, Nomo taught Yoshi that pitch, and Bobby had taken him out of the rotation, told him to go out and throw that fork ball as much as he had to or as little as he had to, but he had to find it, and he didn't find it until he met with Hideo up in Milwaukee, and since that time, he's been their best pitcher. You can see the results. Ripped to center field, back is Dunstan. Had a, he's had a complete workout already, and we've just played three. Fine running catch by Sean Dunstan to take a second extra base and away from Luis Gonzalez. But Tony Womack's triple and Bell sack fly has put the Diamondbacks on the board. First pitch to Robin Ventura from Randy Johnson is a strike. Three to one, the Mets lead the Diamondbacks here in the top of the fourth. Chris Berman, Ray Knight, Buck Martinez. Glad you could be with us for our nighttime portion of our day-night doubleheader here in the National League Divisional Series. Ripped and a fair ball over the head of Durazo. Ventura will dig for two easily as Womack fires it into second base. So two home runs and now a double for the Mets in the extra base department along with two singles. Well, I'm going to go back to my theory. If you can hit, you can hit. It doesn't matter if they're left-handed, right-handed, both-handed. Robin Ventura can flat-out hit, as can John Olerud. You get hitters that are pure hitters, it doesn't matter who's on the mound, and I, that's why I never really believed in matchups. I know I had to manage because of it, because I didn't have those kind of players, but those are some ugly numbers that Randy's throwing out there at you. Well, the six strikeouts are great, but five hits, three extra base hits,
Now here's Sean Dunstan to lay one down. Look at him fly, Ray. And Matt Williams, as good as he is, not going to be able to make the play. That's a sweet play. Let me tell you something. That's a sweet play. The only thing that it might not be sweet is you're at the bottom of the lineup. But anytime you can get that runner on second base to third base with a drag bunt, that's not a give up bunt. He saw Matty Williams there. Perfect little bunt. You know that this grass is very soft. Matty giving his best effort there, but... Great play by Sean Dunson. First and third, eight-hole hitter up. You know that Randy Johnson is not a good fielder. That's a heck of a play there. Dunston normally hitting first or second in the lineup and generally setting up the offense with that play. I've seen him do it many times early in his career. Seventh-hole hitter, usually you drive that run in from second base, but either way, you're going to get Ricky Henderson up there as long as you stay out of the double play. Ray Ordonez. Struck out in the second inning. Yes. You know, as great as Randy Johnson has been in the postseason, his record two and five. I mean, not a bad ERA, but not the dominating Randy Johnson. He's lost his last five postseason starts. Lost both last year as a member of the Astros to the Padres. Game one to Kevin Brown, then lost to Hitchcock in game four. Pitched well in those games. As a member of the Mariners in 97, he was rocked hard. Lost to Mussina in that series a couple times. And the chopper, and he has to go to first in the Mets. Ventura comes across on Ardonias' chopper, four to one. It's a little safety squeeze right there. What he does is just... Gets a pitch and he knows that he can bunt fair, bunts it, gets a runner in from third. But see here, just a little safety screen. He's trying to drive the ball by Johnson there with a vacated second base. Sweet little baseball by the Mets. We talk about how they hit, but nice little bunt to get the runner to third. First and third, Ordonia staying out of a double play, bunting, getting the runner to second base, getting the runner in. I don't know if Bobby's doing that, if they're doing all this on their own. Doesn't matter, does it? Doesn't make any difference. There, there. Buck, Buck talked about how his ball club with Jay Bell a lot of times bunting guys over with Luis Gonzalez hitting 340 most of the years bunting guys over on their own. They know how to play the game. Look at that shot, but snared by Williams, fires out Yoshi. And Dunstan has to stay at second. He got good lumber on that ball, right? He did hit that ball hard. And it's a little surprising that Randy Johnson, as you see the great Matt Williams there, I think the best third baseman to come along since Mike Schmidt. And as good as Mike Schmidt ever was over there, certainly on that play, didn't see Smitty get dirty too often. Just tell him like it is, bro. I'm just listening. Play the position. I'm, I'm yeah, certainly not going to come here and say that, you know, start getting on Mike Schmidt. Nobody better than him. No, I'm not getting on it. I'm just telling you like it is. I, I'm talking about how good Matty Williams is. Anthony Henderson walked, stole the base, and was aboard when Olerud homered in the third inning. He spoke. Johnson going over there and over there and over there might have affected the concentration. So the Mets have gone long ball, they've gone short ball now on the RBI sack bunt by Ordonez. Well, that one passed him. Do you think Randy thinks about gee postseason? I mean, does he does that thought go into his head? Anytime you struggle and you don't have Look success, this, it, it bothers you. I, I, it bothers you. When you're successful in any situation, whether it's day games, night games, AstroTurf versus grass, if you struggle with something, people make you aware of it. But today's media... Tony Womack to the track. Henderson gives it a ride. Dunstan stranded, but the Mets have scored against, against Johnson. They lead it 4 
Four to one now. The Mets lead the Diamondbacks. Bottom of the fourth. And how about these views that we've had thanks to our friends in the MetLife Blimp Snoopy 2. Bird's eye view of the Bob. Since the program began in 1987, the MetLife Blimp Snoopy 1 and Snoopy 2 have flown over 700,000 miles. Right, aerial coverage of sporting events and television specials throughout the United States and Canada. So we thank them for their help tonight in bringing you the pictures nighttime here in the desert. It's cooling off now in the lower 80s, Ray. <laughs> So Matt Williams tries to get the Diamondbacks going, but Ordonez across the whole group, one up, one down here in the Arizona fourth. Matty no for two. So here is flame throwing Randy Johnson against nibbling Masato Yoshi. Fork ball, nibble away, away. You fool you a little bit inside, and you know, on paper, wow, Matt's exhausted. It's hot. They got no sleep. But you know what? Maybe that's the best way to hit against Randy Johnson. Go up, maybe a little bit of a headache from the bubble you had the night before, the late arrival, the cigars, and the flight. Try it not feeling 100%, and it's worked thus far. Meanwhile, Yoshi, while not overpowering like Al Leiter was last night, it was just absolutely superb. You know, the Mets now here down the stretch here. It's well. Reed has pitched very well in his last few starts. There's Al. It was just a hero last night. I mean, the 4-0 run. Maybe the Mets are Mr. October. They got it right in October. They needed they needed that calendar turn. Right. Well, I know they're not late September. We know that. Well, they really should have been back at school. Right. But Al Lider coming up big, not only in the game. He broke the big losing streak. In June, he beat the Yankees. He broke. He, he beat the Braves. Broke it in June. Broke it in, in September. Pitched that big game last night. So she went complete game, agreed a complete game to give that bullpen a rest. Benitez and Kirk Window was Franco Cook were all scorched because they were having to go out there every night. Count is three and two to Rubio Durazo. Pretty important. It's hard to get much better than that. And when you talk about coming up big, I mean, he just, he got that two-run home run in the first inning from Alfonso and just made it stick. Talk about this guy hitting moon shots. Back it goes to left field. Back, 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 back. professional baseball in the United States after playing for Monterey in Mexico goes from double A to triple A to Arizona and he hits a home run in the first game of the playoffs Wow well he's hit 11 of them this year in 155 at bats one every 14 at bats has Buck Showalter raving they've got a pretty fine first baseman and Travis Lee that's injured right now and this man is coming here and taking this city by storm well, he's hit two home runs in a game off John Smoltz this year. He hit one 446 off Kurt Schilling. And now he's just powdered this one in the playoffs. Talking about the Mets not wanting to wake up from this magical mystery tour they're on in October. How about the ride that Durazo's on? Steve Finley to center field. Dunstan, who must feel like a decathlete tonight, makes the catch in left center. Again, this is the first time I've been to this ballpark, and when you look out there, 407 and straightaway center field, 413, 413, this is a huge outfield. Look at Durazo. But Sean Dustin will feel like a marathon runner there. That's right center field. I mean, that's just off of center field, just a little bit left of right center field. 13 feet out there. That, that's a long, long way. Yeah, right and left center are longer than dead center. Taking a tour of the park, maybe here at this next half inning. For those who have not really watched the game out of the park here for two years. 
Not any game of this magnitude has been played here. This is the young shortstop, Hanley Frias. Started with Batista, traded to Toronto. For Dan Pesak. Fox played some, but Frias makes more plays. And he gets under it and sends it a pretty long way. Then Agbiani will make the catch in right field. Durazo has put the Diamondbacks on the board. Four to two Mets. Four to two, bottom of the fifth. The Mets lead the Diamondbacks. Who holds the record for the most strikeouts in a division series game? Our athletic trivia question answer: Kevin Brown, 16 for the Padres, September 29th last year against the Astros, in which Brown outdueled Randy Johnson, game one of the series. Both pitchers went eight innings. Randy struck out nine. Kevin Brown had 16 strikeouts. So if you got it right, especially staying up late at night if you're in the East, still having your trivia took on, we salute you. Kelly Stinnett fouls out, and that'll bring up Randy Johnson, who granted a second his first time up. Randy taking extra hacks in the cage last couple of days. Of course, he owns Yoshi. I mean, remember, he had two hits in the win that Johnson had in New York. Game one was a 10 to 1. Had two hits there, so if there's ever a picture that he owns, here it is. He doesn't own many. He owns a lot of hitters, but he don't yeah. own many pitchers. Think? You're right. Lifetime 667. The back off the paraphernalia. Diamondbacks battling from behind or attempting to all night long after Alfonso had a homer in the first inning. A solo chip. Well, he's now 500 lifetime against Yoshi. We're getting down to the nitty gritty of this now, Ray, aren't we? The Sports Century, the 50 Greatest Athletes Friday at 10 Eastern. Number 17, Irvin Magic Johnson. I voted him higher than this, I gotta tell you, but 17 is still pretty good last time I checked with every athlete in the century. Followed at 10.30 by number 16, the Splendid Splinter, Ted Williams. Last player to bat over 400, of course. So that's Friday night, Magic Johnson, Ted Williams. Like I said, it, it's pretty big now. It sparked so much debate and controversy. It's just fun. I mean, sports is all opinion versus opinion. Nobody's right or wrong here. It is fun. It's been great. I mean, everybody asks me everywhere I go, and they can't believe they don't tell me who's number one, which they don't. So don't keep writing and calling me. They, you would think after 20 years I'd have more connections at ESPN, but I don't. They don't tell me. Wings and misses all of a sudden Yoshi is saying hey you know those two strikeouts you get every inning Randy Johnson I'm gonna pick up a pair myself four to two minutes through five ESPN's coverage of the divisional playoffs is brought to you by Michelin watch college game day Saturdays at 11 a.m. Eastern time and find out how you can win with Michelin and ESPN and by TGI Fridays, home of the Jack Daniels Grill. From the pool to the yard, four to two Mets over the Diamondbacks here in the top of the sixth inning. Not by Annie Ventura and Dunstan. The bat against Randy Johnson was eight strikeouts, but has given up a solo homer to Alfonso and a two-run homer. Wow! Almost took his head off, and the ball goes to Jay Bell who makes the play. Agbayani just smoked on the water. That was a deep purple shot right up the middle. Look at the pitch. The, the ball is down over the middle of the plate. Randy almost took one on top of the noggin there. Dropping down Agbayani after striking out twice. Hits the ball right on the nose. Jay Bell 
reacting to the ball up the middle. It becomes an easy play after that. He took all the juice off the ball. Rooney gets an assist. Yeah, one, four, three. Ah! Joined this late as Ventura gets a strike one. Alfonso was solo homer in the first. All over to two run homer in the third to make it three nothing Mets. Strike two. Then a sack fly by Bell in the bottom of the third made it three one. But the Mets got that run back immediately on a sacrifice bunt by Ordonez in the fourth. And then Durazo with a solo home run in the bottom of the fourth made it four two. And that's where we stand. Chris Berman, Ray Knight, Buck Martinez with you for game one and then game two. Same bat time, same bat channel, late start. Strikeout number nine, Ventura's gone. That'll bring up Sean Dunstan. 12 years now of providing aerial television coverage of sporting and special events. MetLife Blimp Snoopy 2 brings you aerial shots of tonight's Division Series matchup. Look to the skies as the MetLife Blimp visits down near you. You never know. Big Brother is always watching. Look at these big Snoopy. You know, Lucy's up there and Schroeder. And oh, they're all up there. Yeah, they are. Blindness. They're all up there. All right. It's like mid season. So Schroeder has his piano and Linus is the blanket. Appreciate those of you in the East staying up late with us. Not necessarily our idea to go this late, but we're glad you're with us and we'll be here tomorrow night. These two teams pack a lot of punch. This ball coming in the right is going back and makes the catch. So a one, two, three inning for the second straight inning for Randy Johnson. Dunstan's gone. The Diamondbacks trying to rattle the termites out of the bat rack. for you as the Mets Alfonso and Olerud have gone long ball tonight off Randy Johnson who could very well win the Cy Young Award although Mike Hampton and some others might have something to say about it if Randy did he'd be one of the few to win it in each league meanwhile some of the heavy metal of the Arizona lineup here up against Masato Yoshi in the sixth inning J Bell Luis Gonzalez Matt Williams two three four Gaylord Perry, the only one that's done it thus far, though I gotta think Pedro could have Pedro and Randy win this year, which would make it from one to three, with one in each league. Do you see any change in Yoshi here? I mean, an impressive couple of strikeouts last inning. Is this the uh, you know, third time around here for the heart of the order, Ray? And Diamondbacks a different game plan? Well, that's the key there is getting ahead, then wow. throwing that split finger he has not thrown a slider or curveball tonight just moving his fastball in and out and using the splitter little reach out and touch someone base hit by Jay Bell the table setter is aboard for the Diamondbacks down four to two here in the bottom of the sixth well as soon as I mention it there it comes all the way to the sixth inning and look at the rotation here. Piazza sets up outside, puts up the three. There's a little slider. I mean, it only breaks two or three innings. It's third, I mean, two or three inches. His third best pitch gets beat by it there. Jay Bell on first base, tying run at the plate. The meat part of the lineup that you talked about, Chris. 111 ribbies by Gonzalez, 142 Williams, and 103 by Finley. Coupled with 112 by Bell. Four men in this line have driven in 100 runs. And these are tough, tough outs he's got to wade through right here. Five hits now for the Diamondbacks. Luis Gonzalez doubled and flown out to center field is up. Now four All-Stars this year for the Diamondbacks.
solo and two-run home run and a no-doubter for Luis Gonzalez. And Ray, you had a hunch that this might be an inning that Yoshi was tiring or the Diamondbacks were timing him better. The third time around the batting order is the toughest time, Chris. You're starting to lose a little bit. They've seen you. He's throwing nothing but fastball splitters. They know he can't throw the fastball by him. Sometimes it takes that much time for good hitters to zero in on a pitcher. On the other hand, let's see what Randy Johnson does when he goes through the third time. He gets tougher and tougher and tougher as the game goes on. 49,000 plus on their feet as Matt Williams swings through a high fastball. A lot of pitchers, Nolan Ryan, Tom Seaver, Randy Johnson, if you don't get them early, you don't get them. It's just because they're, they're power pitchers and they locate well. Guys that pitch with location, when they start to tire, they make bad pitches and, and then they become less effective. That's why you have so many five, five and a half, six inning pitchers in the big leagues nowadays is that first, second time around, they get you the third time around end up going to the bullpen. That's Dennis Short Order Cook, the lefty, who had such a big first half of the year, the year for the Mets throwing the bullpen. As that pitch is high, one and two. And now, 91 miles an hour. He's not throwing a pitch tonight over 90 miles an hour. Just one of those. Everything effective has been 87, 88. Now he's feeling juiced. He's overthrowing, trying to throw the ball too hard. That's when his ball straightens out and he loses control. But he fooled Williams there, so Yoshi comes back to strike out the cleanup hitter here for the Diamondbacks with one out. Look at this pitch here. You're talking about getting the ball out over the plate, setting up outside, the fastball moving out over the plate, right to the bat barrel. That's why you have to pitch inside. All you boys and, and you young ladies that pitch at home, you got to stay inside on people. You cannot... Get that fastball out over the plate. So now Dave Wallace, the pitching coach, will go to the mound. And with Durazo, who homered off of Yoshi the last time, he'll be lifted. Cook coming in. Yoshi is gone, and so is the lead for the Mets. 4-4 here in the bottom of the sixth inning. So he pitched well here until the sixth, and now Dennis Cook will work with the bases clear. In a double switch, Cook comes in, and boy, in the first half of the season, you see the 10 and 5, much of that coming early on. He kind of ran out of steam a little bit as we went down the stretch, but Cook will come in, and on a double switch, will hit in the six hole, or rather the, the seven hole for the Mets, and Melvin Mora will be the new center fielder and hit in the nine hole, which means he'll bat second when the Mets come up in the top of the seventh. So we'll talk Cook in a minute, but let's bring Ray Buck Martinez in. And, and did you see anything in Yoshi that would indicate that he was changing or that the Diamondbacks were timing him out better, Buck? What I think happened, Chris, was he forgot to throw the changeup to Willie Gonzalez. He threw him two fastballs, he had a double and a home run. His changeup was very effective, but he got away from it later on in the ball game. Early on, he really had the Diamondbacks off speed, but boy, I tell you what, Gonzalez hit two pretty good fastballs. They were down, out over the plate, and he hit him hard. It's an offer that you can say you've outpitched Randy Johnson, which he had until this inning. Look with that high kick, and Durazo with a no-doubter opposite way job. His last time up, now Randy been behind the whole night. The game is even up. Well, we're getting to that part of the ball game as you look at Masato Yoshi, five and a third, and most all that damage really done here in the in the sixth inning. Only four hits prior to that. Single J Bell, a big home run by Luis Gonzalez. Cook goes three and one to Durazo with Finley on deck. And to add to what Buck said, we talked about. Him using his changeup or his split finger as the pitch that sets up his fastball. And he pitches just opposite of most pitchers that use the fastball to set up their other pitches. And against Gonzalez, a dead low ball fastball hitter. He 
Starts him off with Brooke change up and goes to fastball, fastball, fastball. And when you throw a good hitter his favorite pitch in the area that he's strongest in, things are gonna happen. Mm -hmm. Bad things are gonna happen. So that's a pitcher going with his second best pitch into a hitter's strength. Well, I'll ask both Ray and you, Buck, here with two outs with Finley and a a night when obviously the ball is sailing left and right. Seven extra base hits tonight. Do you change your game plan even more so when you see that it's one of these sort of nights, Buck? I mean, now Dennis Cook and the way he will work the Diamondbacks here? No, I don't think you can. I think you have to stick with what has worked for you all year long. I tell you what, we're dealing with two teams with some pretty good hitters, yeah. so when you miss your spot, you're going to get a hit hard. I mean, you're right back to where you started. I mean, in, you're 0-0. Zero, zero. You're in a ball game now. It's a three-inning ball game. And now you're playing three innings. So the only thing you may do differently now is you may start bunting guys over. You'll go to matchups as you look at the bench. Both benches with Colburn, Gilkey, and Miller, right-handed bats. Fox Harris, left-handed bats. You start thinking about the matchups, going through your mind, looking at the matchup sheets. Your, as a manager, your mind becomes much more active this time of the game, and then again, it becomes a three-inning ball game. Little number that if it, uh, Cook touched it when it went foul, the crowd didn't think so, but that didn't go foul. Finley beat that out. There was no question about that. Well, Ray and Chris, one thing that Bobby Valentine has in his favor here tonight, you're talking about a three-inning game. His bullpen that was worn down so much right at the end of September has been recharged a little bit because Rick Reed threw a complete game on Saturday and then Al Leiter threw a complete game last night. So the bullpen has been rested and it's been very effective when it has adequate rest. And Buck and Ray, one thing that's happened the last couple of weeks is the return to form of John Franco. He's not the, quote, closer yet, although he's second all-time in saves. But Benitez is the closer. But right around that Atlanta series two weeks ago, the decision was made that Franco would be the last lefty and not Cook, that his tendon injury in his hand had, had ena enabled him to pitch better. So he'll be the, if the Mets have the lead, the second-to-last pitcher, probably. Well, what you're going to see to win this ball game is either Lenny Harris facing Franco, where you pitch hit Lenny Harris and he brings Franco in to face Lenny Harris because he's their number one guy off the bench left-handed. And then Colburn is their best pinch hitter right-handed, probably facing the setup man, Mahomes, Wendell, or Benitez if it's the closing situation there. Lenny Harris with 24 pinch hits this year, second most ever in the National League in one season. Well, Finley aboard, and that'll bring up Hanley Frias. And a reminder that after this game, Sports Center with Stuart Scott, Rich Eisen. Uh, more here from Gary Miller is in the house, Tim Kirkchin, Ray and I, and whatever happens here in game number one, reaction from New York, and the big win by the Yankees, and a huge night for Bernie Williams. Houston's chipper strategy, and how about the Astros going into Atlanta? Here's a team that maybe it's time for them. Two quick bow outs in the playoffs the last two years, so we'll report in all three games. And give you a little look. I tell you, there's not a team in this, these playoffs in either league that's not a great ball club. And, and each team has weaknesses, but that Houston Astro Club, decimated with injuries and, and problems throughout the year, with, with all the problems with their physical problems, coaches and players, but very solid ball club. You know how good the Braves are. You see how good that the Arizona Diamondbacks and the Mets are get over to the American League and you got dominating offensive clubs and, and not a lot of pitching. Here's what you have. I mean, you have, and, you know, here we are in a 4-4 game, but there were just 12 teams right out of the 30 that were over 500. So the teams that are going to enter the postseason are going to be pretty good. Yeah, they're way over 500. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and you got Cincinnati Reds sitting at home with 96 wins. And congratulations to Jack McKeon and the Reds oh, team. And what a season they had. What a great season they had. Great job putting that team together. A very young ball club with a with a minuscule payroll. 
get me out of there and great things happen. <laughs> well, I didn't want to say that. No, you could have won. Well, I, then I'm in part. Now look at the way all of the plays first base. It's not holding on in the conventional way, Buck. No, he, what he does is he gets out there, and then it's very difficult for Jay Bell to get a feel for how far he can get off. They only do this with the left-handers that don't have a particularly good move. That's a unique cat and mouse game. It also blocks the view, doesn't it, Buck, of the base runner or the, where the ball is? Yeah, he just really can't get comfortable out there, and they won't do this with Kenny Rogers because he is so good at holding base runners close. They've done it with Leiter, and they do it with Cook. And it's very difficult for the base runner to really get comfortable over there and be confident that he can steal second. You know, the way we combated this in Cincinnati, when Davey Johnson managed, I was coaching third base for him, and Jimmy Leland was the first manager I saw institute this with his first baseman, was to go ahead and get your lead quickly, get it to the cut, and on first move, take off. And the only way that they can get you really in that, because your lead is so huge, is to step off, and then that normally gets you there. And John Oler has done a pretty good job of adjusting because it's been new for him since he's come here to New York. But with Kenny Rogers, they tried it the first game, and Rogers felt like he was going to pick off Olerud instead of the baseman. <laughs> <laughs> well, two and two to Henley Freas, 23-year-old shortstop from the Dominican Republic. says Brian Gorman behind the plate. The Diamondbacks are gone, but not until they've made it a brand new game. I know it's late. I know you're weary. I know your plans don't include me. Oh, but yeah, I'll tell you do. what, Bob Seeger's a baseball fan, and he enjoys a tie game in the seventh inning. We've got long ball. We've got some of everything. Yeah, we have had, and, and you're going to see Randy Johnson deal here in these next two or three innings. Ray Ordonez, slow bouncer to Jay Bell at second base. One pitch, one up, one down for the Mets in the seventh inning. 100 pitches now for Randy Johnson. He's nine Ks tonight, Ray. Well, that tells me that he's right about where he should be because he can get through innings sometime. If you swing at his first pitch, which a lot of people do, he'll have an eight or nine pitch inning here in one of these next two innings. Well, it's, a, it's important to, to note that, you know, he was way above the pitch count, but he's now retired the last 10 minutes. So this is Melvin Mora who went in a double switch. Mora, one of the heroes in the ninth inning win Sunday by the Mets against Pittsburgh to allow them to get into the wild card playoff game. Got aboard, scored, made a big contribution, and he will be talking with Bobby earlier. An outstanding defensive player when the time comes. Yeah, they think he swings the bat well. He has power. Hits a lot of balls to right center field. But he has great speed, great throwing arm. Gets a great jump in center field. 5-2 player. Really high on this guy. One of the reasons why they're not playing Roger Cedeno in center field right now because Mora is the heir apparent there. Matt Williams. Boy, he makes it look so easy, doesn't he? Two up, two down, 11 straight retired for Randy Johnson. You, you called it third time through the lineup. Johnson more of a sale, and you thought that the Diamondbacks would measure Yoshi. Well, your great pitchers do that. And, you know, I, I have experienced it so many times facing the great pitchers like Mike Scott, you know, playoff pitchers that, as you see him, make the play there so easily and effortlessly and, and I just want to say with all due respect to Mike Schmidt earlier I was only talking about how great this guy I know as long as Mike knows yeah, well, Mike, Mike and I are good enough friends that you'll get a, a, a message on your well, like, it could be like Barkley and, and uh, Pippen I think so oh. you get a voicemail I'm not with that so here's Ricky Henderson now the fourth time up race 
Yeah, look right here. See here? And this is just what's so typical of the great mm -hmm. pitchers who I was going to make the point before. Even Ricky Henderson, you go back, you know. Here it is, Ray. Sometimes on your particular night, Randy Johnson doesn't know what his best pitch is until he throws 70 or 80 pitches. He and the catcher work together, and Buck will tell you that. He has such a great fastball and devastating slider, but on some nights he may not have the, the break on the breaking ball. And with a two-pitch pitcher, it's that much more critical. Randy does not possess a changeup. But Ricky wears him out. Mm -hmm. Second walk tonight by Henderson against Randy Johnson Buck. So he's been a little nemesis for him. Well, he sure has. And he always walks and gets on base and gets into his head. But Randy Johnson, as that graphic pointed out, is better as the game goes along. And I've got to believe, and Ray, back me up if you think it's right, adrenaline was a factor early. He was throwing 97, 98 miles an hour, but he was a little bit out of his zone. Now he's got a little bit more of a command of his pitches, maybe a little bit tired. The velocity's not quite as high, but the quality of his pitches has improved dramatically. Well, I agree totally. And, and Randy Johnson is, although he gives you that impression of, of being calm out there, and, but he's, he's really a very high-strung guy, always has been. And it takes a while to get the feel on the mound, although this is his home ballpark. Hey, if you're not pumped up, you're not breathing. That's, That's right. right. Yeah. It's a game. Yeah, we were so Should close. have seen us trying to rehearse the open. That pitched Edgardo Alfonso was up top for a ball. <laughs> Home run in the first inning, struck out in the third. A line shot grabbed by Williams off the shoe tops in the fifth. You'll see Randy, as Buck pointed out, his velocity 92-93. He will make that 96-97 mile an hour fastball pitch when he has to. There a little bit, dropping down a little bit. Well, he's become the type of guy that understands more about pitching now as he's logged more innings and he understands his body a little bit more. He will throw two seamers, four seamers, look for a little movement and try to locate his pitches. Take a look at the movement on this last pitch. A little bit of a side angle, ball running down and away, and it runs too far off the plate outside. But he is pitching. He is simply not a power pitcher. He is a true pitcher. Here goes Ricky. Forget about it. <laughs> That's why you need not throw over, because when he wants to steal, Ricky steals. And I asked Ricky about his game plan. When you're a catcher and you see Ricky get such a good break, you have a tendency to rush. And watch Ricky. He never stops. He has momentum going towards second. Stanett can see that, and he rushes the throw and almost hits Randy Johnson in the back. Never stops him. Anytime he can get momentum in that walk and lead, he'll steal on you. And a whirly bird up top that's three and one. Well, this as a pitcher is where you have first base open. The critical run is the runner on second base. So three and one here, you really have to make a pitch. So you got old root on deck, you punch him out one time, two big base hits early, but you have to make a pitch right here, and if you don't make it, you move him on to first base. Rip to center field, Finley there. Hangs up just in time, Alfonso really gave it a ride, but Finley made the grab and we head to the bottom of the seventh. Seventh inning stretch time here in the desert. Knotted at four. ESPN's coverage of the divisional playoffs is brought to you by Pepsi, the joy of cola. And by Quaker State, for protection beyond 3,000 miles under any driving conditions. <laughs> Seventh inning stretch time at the Bob. 49,000 plus on their feet, hoping the Diamondbacks can complete this come-from-behind rally and win their first ever postseason game and their first ever try. The Mets have not been in the postseason since 1988. So for them, it's been an 11-year drought and wondering on Friday of last week, would it happen this year? Here they are. We got a tie ball game here, partners. Late, but you stayed up. You've been rewarded. Bottom of the lineup for Arizona: Stanett, 
Johnson was in the on deck circle and why not at Tony Womack. Gets Dennis Cook who came on with one out in the sixth inning after the Diamondbacks had tied it on a two run home run by Luis Gonzalez. Chris yeah. Berman, Ray Knight, Buck Martinez with you here at the Bob. It's good. It's fun. It is and Dennis Cook is one of those guys that can go three innings. Probably won't go for two tonight. But get you through the lineup one time. Akbayani makes the catch and there's one up one down here in the Arizona seventh. But he has the fastball to change up the big slow curveball. He gets you with deception. But the more you see him, the less deceptive he is. The more pitches he throws, the less effective he is. Because as he tires, his location is not as sharp. So generally he goes out there for about six outs. And here in the bottom of the order, Bobby decides to leave him out there to see if he can wade through eight to nine hole hitters and get to Walmack to set his bullpen up with the four right-handers, Benitez, Mahomes, Wendell, and Dotel. And then Franco mm -hmm. to match up with whomever Bobby throws up there. The thing about Franco is he's so effective against right-handed hitters also, so. With that changeup that he throws, it moves so well away from right-handed hitters. Biggest strike zones in the history of the game. Just thinking about him pitching this year. I mean, this year, okay. It is 364 strikeouts. Fourth best ever in a single season. He had 17 once. He had 15 once. He had 14 strikeouts three times. He had 13 once. He had 12 strikeouts three times. He had 11 strikeouts nine times. He had 10 strikeouts five times. It's all this year. <laughs> That's a career for most people. Well, 23 times in 35 starts, he had double-figure strikeouts, which ties the record by Nolan Ryan, breaking the old National League mark set by Sandy Koufax, 21 in 1965. That was Turk Wendell, who's had such a big year for the Mets, and he wants to pitch every day, so he just wants to throw. As you say he made the should be next one in. Just to pitch to Randy, and oh my goodness, it could be. Here's the throw by Bayani Johnson with a stand-up double. He owns Yoshi and he owns Cook. Well, check this out. Man, he is flying. He almost stops at round first. I don't know if he's ever rounded first. <laughs> Has he ever rounded first? <laughs> Who cares about all the strikeouts? The go-ahead run at second base with one out for Tony Womack. In a couple of steps is Ventura. Tony Womack is excellent at pulling that ball, dragging that ball by the pitcher. Dennis Cook, the left-hander, falls off the mound. Alfonso playing very deep. I mean, this is just a give-up base hit. If he goes ahead and drags that ball right by the pitcher to the right side of the umpire there, it's a Ghibli base hit, first and third. Overrood back. Alfonso back to knock the ball down. Okay. Oh, drop. Off the fist, Henderson playing in should have no problem. And he makes the play, and you know what? Randy Johnson, and this is his That's fifth double of the year. You yeah. asked that he rounded first, yes. But he thought there were two outs. And so it ends up being a double play, and the rally is stymied. Maybe we should go back to the strikeouts. We said, who cared about the strikeouts? Just give me doubles. 
That's an unbelievable play here that Randy Johnson just forgets how many outs there are, right? Well, he does. I mean, he's just jogging right there anyway. And, I mean, he gave all-out effort from first to second, so he's, you know, probably a little fatigued. Well, meanwhile, while we're, we're showing Randy's gap, he comes right back and throws one pitch, one up, one down to Olerud on a little grounder here to second base. But Brian Butterfield, third base, so of course, too late now. He's almost going to go, uh, Randy. Well, earlier in that shot, as Piazza points, Butterfield was watching the ball to left field, and then he runs toward him after he's three-quarters of the way there. But the fact is, you always, as a third base coach, show the runner at second base how many outs there are. Plus, I've looked, and there's at least four places in this ballpark that it shows the outs, the indicators on outs. I mean, with the electronics and, and all the big displays in this ballpark, there's no way you don't know how many outs there are. Because you've got it on third baseline, first baseline, center field scoreboard. And they all look the same. One out. Still one out. They're about no, that's well, let's see a real if, big sign. Let's see if he takes it to the mound. Of course, one pitch, one out. So it, Oh, he won't take it to the mound. He's been around too long and he doesn't get paid to score runs or, or to base run, but a lot of times those guys out there, they get no man's land running the bases. They, they don't feel comfortable out there. I know that my first year in the big leagues, I only had 58 at-bats a whole season. Every time I got a base hit, the most uncomfortable place was on the bases because that's the place I spent the least amount of time. And, and uh, you know, it's, it's a lonely feeling out there sometimes to run the bases. You think a guy in the big league as long as Randy Johnson, but you realize most of his time in the American League, and you could tell the way he was running the bases when he hit that double that he's not comfortable out there with that. And it's not something that pitchers work on. You don't go to spring training and work on base running with pitchers. I mean, you, most of the time you hope they make outs. So he, he's a guy that of everybody in the ballpark, Randy Johnson is the most uncomfortable guy on second base. He's ahead of Piazza 0-2. Michael with a single up the middle. Fly ball to center and a strikeout. And a second strikeout. Johnson with double figure strikeouts once again, his tenth of the night. Which gives us an opportunity to check out our new era in game box score. Last hit, by the way, for the Mets, that bunt single by Dunstan way back in the fourth inning. Olerud with a two-run homer, Alfonso with a solo home run. The other RBI coming on the sacrifice bunt by Ordonez. And that's four runs on six hits tonight for the New York Mets. In there for a strike to Benny Akbayani, who has struck out twice tonight. Hit a rope up the middle his last time up that hit the glove of Johnson that bounded to Bell. So double digit strike again. And Nolan Ryan's in the stratosphere in that department, but Randy Johnson is uh, is in the next group. Well you see Akbayani punts out the first two times, the last time up rocked it up the middle on a fastball away. So Randy starts him off immediately with a breaking ball and paints away with a fastball. Crowd smells it, but it's ball one. There's that 97 mile an hour fastball that we alluded to going to 92 93 miles an hour and then when he wants to throw hard he gears up to 97 98 inside two and two that was an ugly pitch 88 mm -hmm. mile an hour slider he just got way underneath that ball there tried to guide it down and in instead of throwing it he got definitely out of his arm slot there he, he drops down a little below three quarters because he's so tall, it looks like he's kind of sidearm, but actually his hand stays above the ball. He's really a three-quarter type delivery. And there he got down in there about sidearm, got his hand underneath the ball, and the ball just didn't do anything. He's starting to get to the part of the game to where even Randy Johnson started getting fatigued with his legs. Buck mentioned during our break about the leg being such an important factor. Struck him out for the fifth inning. A pair of strikeouts here for Johnson. 11 on the night. 
And the big guns coming up in the bottom of the eighth for Arizona. Bell, Gonzalez, and Williams trying to give the Diamondbacks their first lead of the night. Playoff baseball, 4-4. It's nail-biting time here in the bottom of the eighth inning. And we don't think we have royalty here. The woman right there in the light blue is Julia Ruth, one of Babe Ruth's two daughters. She winters here in Arizona, lives in northern New England, New Hampshire, Maine area, and the in the summer big baseball fan and she's calling for a home run man. yeah well, why not so, <laughs> she said let's go jay you know is that in her blood or what roger sedanio to double switch is in right field and turk wendell is the new pitcher against jay bell and sedanio immediately called on to make the catch and there is one out Bell will hit, uh, rather, Wendell will hit in the five hole in Agbayani's spot. Sedania will be up second in the ninth. He's hitting in the seventh spot. She definitely wants home runs, huh? She's sitting next to Angela Showalter, Buck Showalter's wife, and of course, one of our favorite people in the, uh, the row ahead, Joe Garagio. Joe Garagio, junior, GM, but. Uh, There's one of our favorite people. When you see him, you just hit baseball. You're in a good mood. Well, he's always in a good mood. I, I've never seen him when he wasn't so positive. He, he believes in a lot of causes. He's, he's done a lot for the baseball player, the old timers that did not have the benefit of the latter day pension plans and done a lot with smoke was tobacco and, and making it aware. Father and son. And the Diamondbacks can come through. Well, this man certainly came through, Ray, the last time up after Bell single Luis Gonzalez two-run homer in the sixth. Pretty much sent Yoshi to the showers and tied this game at four. Well, he's tough to pitch to. He's wide open, but his left foot is right about five or six inches off a home plate, and he comes into the ball. Very quick bat inside, but he also has ability to hit the ball the other way. Virtually no strikes on the inside part of the plate because he covers that so well with his body. And he's just a devastating low ball hitter. Buck pointed out earlier the pitch that Yoshi made was a quality pitch in that it was down. But a lot like the counterpart on the Chicago Cubs, Sammy Sosa, which is unusual for right-hand hitters. You can't throw the ball too low for Luis Gonzalez. He can hit the ball right off his shoe tops, right out of here. Dead low ball hitter. He must he, be a good golfer. Well, he may be, but look at this stance. Well, not with that stance. Is not. But he's opening and he just closes right up to the plate. Real tight to the plate. No inside part of the plate. That pitch is a strike. But because of the way he approaches the ball, he looks like he's so close to the ball, he flinches. But that ball is right there. Slider on the outside part of the plate. But I've seen this all year long with Luis Gonzalez. He probably gets more non-calls in the inside part of the plate. Anybody in the game is because he closes off there and the umpire sees him flinch. But it's consistent not only with Brian Gorman, but with every umpire seemingly in the league. Gonzalez, the potential go-ahead run. On board with one out for Matt Williams, the RBI leader here of this ball club. Our new era in-game box, Gonzalez with the two-run homer we talked about. The Diamondbacks, four runs on seven hits, and Gonzalez's home run was the first time they'd come back to tie the game. So, there hits in and out of the lineup, and then Johnson with the, the double, but forgot that there was only one out. Was doubled off with the potential, with the potential go-ahead run. But here it's on base with Gonzalez and Matt Williams, who is 0 for 3 tonight. Turk Wendell has one of the slowest deliveries to the plate. When I was in the league and we used to time him, he'd be about 1-7, 1-8. Good starters, good relievers. They like to, they get it in there about 1-2-5, 1-1-5 sometimes. I'm talking about from the time he lifts his foot to the time the catcher catches the ball. Very easy to run on. Usually throws a lot to first base. Luis Gonzalez stole nine bases this year out of 15 attempts. Even with Matt Williams up there, it's a good time here to run. The 
Kurt Windell can't hold you close. Slow roller to Ordonez. And the Mets do what they do better than anyone else. Ordonez, Alfonso, Olerud. So two straight innings, albeit by different manners. The Mets have turned a double play to get out of it. Heading to the ninth, tied up. Yes, sir. Crunch time. 4-4, top of the ninth. Mets, Diamondbacks. Well, I'm giving the advantage right now to the Diamondbacks. And the reason Bobby's already used two players, Mora and Cedeno, in the game. Agbayani and Dunster are gone. He's used two relievers in Cook and Wendell. He's had Franco up throwing already in the big unit. Robin Ventura sails this one down the line. A long run for Womack, and he won't get it. He found Rank. He's still got Hamilton. He's got Matt Franco, oh. who's a great pinch hitter. It sounds yeah. like he's no, but, but if you get into a point, I mean, when you talk about depletion, he has no pinch runner that can run. There's not anybody over there that can run. Well, we'll be talking about it after what happens in this well, game on that's Sports Center. Well. Stewart and Rich follow us with Everything from the three games today, a little preview of Cleveland Boston one with the Jake tomorrow with the Pedro football news. But sometimes this game boils down to Chris, who uses the most bullets and who has bullets left. And and right now Bobby's managing. He's managing for for the for the moment, which you have to do. Randy Johnson is the reason. Well, and he gets a hit for the moment as Robin Ventura, who has doubled tonight, now has singled. So with the leadoff man aboard, and now Roger Cedeno coming to Buck Martinez. Is this a time when you just go with Randy no matter what, or do you, you have him on a short hook here? Well, Chris, I think the, the uh, managers always ask themselves, is the guy in the bullpen better than the guy on the mound? And I think Randy Johnson is still a better guy at this point. His pitch count is up there. He's well over 125 pitches now, but he's making quality pitches, and he's still got that good breaking ball. That time, you got to tip your hat to Ventura because he has been tough on Johnson all night long. In a situation here, a very good runner. It's a Daniel. Bottom of the lineup. Ordonez. Mora. Matt Manti, who since he came over from Florida in early July, bullpen took off, and Bobby Schwinnard, pair of righties throwing in the Arizona pen. Showing bunt, pulling it back, and taking for ball two is Cedeno. It's interesting to note of the eight teams in the playoffs. Every one of them, except the Diamondbacks, says, a, as you would imagine, Ray, a, a winning record in one-run games. Buck Showalter's Diamondbacks are 24 and 24. I'm saying that to prove a point. The other seven are above 500. Arizona is not. Popped in the air. What a break for the Diamondbacks. And they had a shot for a moment in a double play. Fundamentals. Yeah, very difficult to butt Randy Johnson. With that high fastball, the movement, it's just not a given, and there are 2-0 squares around, high fastball, pops it up. Ray and Buck, they've been working on this. They worked extra yesterday. Well, they sure did, and you know what? They had the bun plays out here yesterday, and Buck Showalter, he's a man of details, and he's not missing any details, but they worked on the bun play, and it's something you don't often do once the season starts. That'll bring up Ray Ordonez, who is 0 for 2, and a sacrifice. That sacrifice drove in the Mets' fourth run in the fourth. Looking ahead to the Arizona ninth, Durazo, Finley, and Frias. 5 6 7 due up. Ventura's not quite Ricky Henderson, is he? No, he's it's not even Skitch Henderson. He's attempted two steals all year long. I'm sure both of them will probably back into the hit and run. Mm -hmm. He's safe one time. He runs about like I do. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe still do. <laughs> he hit and run, however. I, I think 
in this situation here with Randy Johnson and a hitter like Ordonez who makes a lot of ground ball contact but it's not a bad spot to hit and run. I mean, you've got to get something going on. You've got more who's a seldom used player there in the nine hole. Ordonez is not going to drive the ball in the gap to, to score Ventura. Hurt there. Very difficult to hit and run on a guy that's overpowering like Randy Johnson with the nasty slider and the, and the fastball. So many balls that are swung through, you end up running into a lot of double plays if you don't have speed over there. I mean, it just doesn't make much sense to send a runner when a guy like Randy Johnson misses so many bats. One and two out of Ordonez, Ventura the runner with one out. Two home runs for each side tonight. A two run and a solo for both the Diamondbacks and the Mets. The ball is missed two and two. Tomorrow, Todd Stottlemyre. Talk about him all day tomorrow, but what a story he is. A torn rotator cuff and he Trying to tiptoe pass surgery and give it a go, and he'll start for Arizona. Kenny Rogers. Big midseason acquisition for the Mets. He goes for New York. Past Williams and Frias in the hole, and the go-ahead run is at second base. Good job by Ordonez, punching it through the left side. So that'll bring up Melvin Mora. Inserted in the seventh, he's hitting in the nine hole. Here it is, Ray. Pitch almost on the ground. Making contact there, which Ordonez does so well. Nerves setting in here. And well, this Bob. will, in my mind, this probably will be the last hitter that Randy faces if he doesn't get him out. He struggled with Henderson all night long. You've got two right-handers out there ready. You've got Henderson and Alfonso, which is the ball game in my mind right here. So if he doesn't get Mora out, if he walks him or whatever, I, I believe that Buck is ready to pull the trigger. Looks like to me he's losing a little bit of his stuff there. Generally, that ball down, nobody makes contact on. Certainly losing his location. Getting behind, missing on that first pitch. Ricky on deck. Yeah, he's starting to struggle. There's a 91 mile an hour fastball. Trying to move the ball a little bit to get a ground ball. Buck talked about Randy being a pitcher instead of a thrower. A little bit of downward movement. Sinking that fastball away, trying to get a ground ball to shortstop. Watching, he's starting to labor. He's starting to use his upper body more than he's pushing off the mound. An indicator that his legs are tiring, and oftentimes your leg tire, your legs tire quicker than your arms tire. 136 pitches for Randy. The last four of which were balls. So the bases are loaded. Ricky Henderson coming up, and we're looking into the dugout. And now Buck Showalter will make the move. Or at least he'll go out to talk. But you may have hit it on the head, Ray, but we'll see. You did hit it on the head. That'll be it for Randy Johnson, who leaves with the bases loaded in a 4-4 game. Bobby Schwinnard coming in. The wheels turning here at the Bob. Johnson cannot break his losing streak in the postseason. Back here in Arizona, while we ponder the Mets trying to take the lead with the bases loaded here in the ninth of the 4-4 game, all eight previous National League Division Series. You know, we just started this in 95. All eight times, Ray, whoever has won game one, 
has gone on to win the series. Certainly a good omen for the Astros who won today and something for the Mets and Diamondbacks to think of in a tie game. The American League, by the way, it's not the case. It's 4-4 because Cleveland always loses the first and then goes on to win. But just it's you win the first game in the National League, you've been perfect. Something to think of as we look at Bobby Schwinnard against Melvin Moore. Only the third time all year in 36 starts, Johnson's been taken out in the middle of an inning. But against uh, Ricky Henderson. Moore walked on four pitches, and Ricky is trying to lose that number. This is a tough, tough assignment. You have a guy that has maybe the best eye in the National League that's not going to swing. Want to know here, he's just taking it. He's not swinging. He's not going to swing until he makes Chenard throw a strike. Then when he gets a strike, he'll go to hitting and looking into a specific area. Ricky Henderson is going to make Chenard throw him a strike. So he'll be hit two and one or three and one. But I don't believe he'll be happy. Oops. Williams dives, comes home. Oh, what a play! What a play by Matt Williams to nail the chart at the plate. He has to turn and totally reposition himself. That is as tough a play as you ever have to make. Look, he starts behind the, the grass, eases forward. The ball hits off with a lift there, allows him to get there. Then he turns, throws with the runner, setting up on the inside part. Great play by Stennett. But watch how he sets up here. Gets his feet totally turned around. The key is getting his shoulder turned toward the plate. There's Stennett. Great job all the way around. Swan. Heck of a play there, but the key was the ball hit the cutout of the grass, jumped up a little bit, and allowed Matt to get to that ball. 0-1, the count to Edgardo Alfonso, the base is still full of Mets. But another thing in that situation, and I hate to go back and talk about it, but it's crucial. 2-0, if you're going to swing, you've got to get a pitch that you can drive in the air somewhere. You don't swing at a pitch down. You get a pitch that you know that you can hit in the air somewhere. Good job by Stinnett on a 58-footer. You know, I think Ricky Henderson's a, a lot better hitter than I was. But, and I've seen him work pitchers so hard, but there in that situation with all the pressure, on this young man that spent most of the season in Triple-A. You better make sure that when you swing the bat. Watch the lead, Ray, that Ardonias is taking at third base, obviously with the infield back in the two outs. That was less than the, than the pitch before. And that pitch almost sailed to the back so We've had a 58-footer and a potential 90-footer. Well, that's crucial because of the fact that Chenard likes his breaking ball. The best place to throw it is down and away. And any short pass ball, if you get out there far enough, you've got a shorter difference to run than the pitcher. One ball away from giving the Mets the lead. It's three and one. I'm telling you, I've been there too many times in this situation with a young pitcher out there. All the pressure is on him. And as a hitter, you just need to relax, make him throw you a strike, go to three and two, where he's got to throw you a fastball. It goes. It's gone. A grand slam home run for Edgardo Alfonso. Yeah. He homered in the first and he slammed in the ninth. A bookend night for Edgardo Alfonso. Three RBIs in the wild card game. Five RBIs tonight. Wow. Jay Bells is puzzled. Is anybody on the field? But you've worked the count to get to the fastball. And there, he got to the fastball three and one instead of waiting to three two. But Carlos Alf Carlos Alfonso, that used to be a player with me. Edgardo Alfonso.
I mean, I know what Bobby Benilla says now. Bobby, before the ball game, said that, there you see Bobby, said that I think this little kid is our MVP. He has got big hit after big hit. Nobody talks about him, but he has some thunder. And he also has the ability to hit when it matters. He also has the ability to quiet 49,000 and send about 5,000 for him of them to the exits. Boy, he's got a quick bat. I'm, I'm telling you. I, that ball just jumps off his bat. We're leaving a little early here. Well. And you know what will happen unless they rally in the ninth. It'll be six straight postseason losses for Randy Johnson. Well, one thing, and Buck Showalter would not come out and say it, but the thing that concern Buck Showalter about his ball club was the relief pitching before you get to Matt Manti. As we look at the home run here, three and one pitch, you're sitting dead red, looking in the area. Boy, middle end, dead red, turned on that ball. The only factor was whether it was going to stay fair just inside the foul pole. He didn't give us a fisk. And here is Olerud with a base hit. John with his third hit tonight. So the Mets were shut down completely, Ray, from the fourth inning here to the ninth. But this team that was two down with three to go after losing eight of nine to end September has kind of all of a sudden said, you know what, they take the devil may care attitude. They came out hacking. He homered right in the first inning as he did last night. Well, and that was a no doubt. And you also have people in situations like Chenard, who has not been in this situation, Bear didn't make this ball club out of spring training, got called up, optioned back the next day to AAA, stayed down there for two months, in a crucial situation. And I learned as a player, it takes a long time to get comfortable in the big leagues. The answer will be retired by Durazo, but the Diamondbacks have their work cut out for them. A five spot for the Fonz. A pair of home runs has the Diamondbacks backed into the corner. Yikes. RBIs in the two biggest games of the year to date for the Mets. Bottom of the ninth inning, some defensive changes. Melvin Mora goes to left field. That's because Daryl Hamilton is now the center fielder. And he will bat in the five spot, which was where Wendell was batting. And the new pitcher is Armando Benitez, the closer. He took over the closer's role, and Franco got hurt and was kind of headed that way anyway. And he's had a stupendous year, right? Well, he's another guy that has some serious gas, fastball, you know, anywhere from 93, 97 miles an hour, hard slider, comes right at you. Another guy that you just approach the same way that you do. Randy Johnson, 40 hits. I mean, that's in 70-plus innings, 128 strikeouts. I mean, not unlike Billy Wagner in that he just can completely dominate you with his fastball. Durazo, Finley, and Frias to hit the 5-6-7 hole here in the ninth inning. And he just gets it and throws it. You watch him. He'll just get that thing rare back and let it go. 97 mile an hour fastball there. My point about being comfortable earlier as we were going out on break, Chris, is that you have to be in the big leagues and experience pressure situations day in and day out before you feel comfortable in it. As I came up there, as you look at Chenard, and a lot of people come up, it takes you a little while. You get a cup of coffee, you start getting your feet wet, you have a little bit of success, then you start to expect to have success. But until you have that success on a day-to-day -day basis, or as a relief pitcher on an outing basis, there's always questions whether or not you belong.
Don't forget, Rich Eisen, Stuart Scott with Sports Center coming up after the game. Durazo, fly ball to left field. That's Melvin Moore over there now. And there's one out. Very quiet Bob. Bob sounds more like the Ray. The new. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Football news. Little uh, carping in Miami over the fish loss to the Buffalo Bills. A reminder that no one circles the wagons like the Buffalo Bills. And so it began as a festive night here in Arizona has continued to be this October surge of the New York Mets. The Mets are looking to go 5-0, and Ray, in the month of October. I know Reggie has the nickname, but maybe this Mets team will be Messieurs October. Yeah, and, and there he is. There is Mr. October for the Mets thus far, although John Olerud certainly played his part with a two-run home run. Three hits tonight. Mets were very loose. I'm not saying Arizona was tight, but we could see the difference, and, and the Mets should have been that way. They were... I don't want to say giddy, Ray, but knew they would come out hacking. Well, I think that when you've had your back against the wall as they did, and then you somehow are able to become unpinned or you move off of that wall and, and you start moving forward, it's just like in a tug of war. Drilled to center field. Daryl Hamilton, who was there, makes the catch at the end of the track. And there's two outs. A big thank you to our friends at the MetLife Blimp Snoopy 2. Some beautiful pictures tonight through the roof here at the Bob. Limp typically cruises at an altitude of 1,200 feet. Thank you, guys. Ladies, you're up there. Great pictures, and it's been great pictures for Bobby Valentine, his coach, Bruce Eggs Benedict. And this New York Met team that, after losing to the Braves Thursday night, Wondering whether it was going to be another year where they're going to have to hear it all winter long. One night ago, they're in Cincinnati. Tonight in Arizona. Come on, they'll probably be in Hawaii. <laughs> they don't care. <laughs> Bring them on. So Ray, Arizona sent Randy Johnson out tonight, but the Mets jumped on him early, and Arizona never had the lead. Never had the lead. Bobby Valentine uses bullpen, Cook, and Wendell to keep them in the ball game, and then relied on his offense as he has all year. Whoa! And Edgardo Alfonso responded with two big home runs, one in the first inning, one in the ninth grand slam. Five RBI. So how about the two road teams coming in, yeah. Houston and the Mets, and the winner of game one thus far, eight for eight in winning the NL Divisional Series. So just when you think you had it figured out, you realize you know nothing at all. The New York Mets October run continues at one, two, three, ninth as they've quieted the bob on a grand slam by Edgardo Alfonso in the ninth inning. They beat the Diamondbacks eight to four. And suddenly the Mets have home field advantage, and mm -hmm. that's the weird thing about 2-2-1. Two, two, and one. Now they just play here tomorrow. They go home with a chance to, even if they lose, two games at home before they have to come all the way back out here. That's why that first game is so huge in these short series. Well, it'll be Kenny Rogers trying to give the Mets a 2-0 lead tomorrow night against Todd Stottlemyre. As the Mets have won it 8-4, to four, and we'll see you here the same bat time, same bat channel, the caboose on the playoff coverage triple header. Two of them on the ESPN, one at four. And our game at 11 Eastern time for Buck Martinez and Ray Knight. All of our crew here in Arizona, we had a thriller, and the Mets just keep on chugging. I'm Chris Berman, the final again, the Mets eight, the Diamondbacks four. Now Sports Center with Rich and Stu.